What's going down? It's DJ Payne One for BeatStars.com, and I have the honor of meeting for for the first time in my life, Brianna Marin. Hello. Very good to how meet you. How are you? Very nice to meet you. I'm, I'm great. I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Uh, let's get right into it. How long have you been writing music and, and recording? Um, I've been writing music since I was maybe 13. I started professionally probably maybe like 22 when I went to Musicians Institute and I learned that you could make a living writing songs. And Musicians Institute is in LA, correct? Yes, in the middle of Hollywood. Okay, that's I was going to ask, because you're not an LA native, no. but you made that move. Was that because of schooling? Uh, it was a compromise. My parents wanted me to go to college, do the whole four-year thing, um, and my compromise was to go to a two-year school and get a degree of some sort uh, in something I enjoy doing. But you, you stayed as well, so what, what kept you there? Um, literally a week into moving to LA, I met a songwriter named Andre Merritt, who wrote like Disturbia and Forever, a whole, time, a whole bunch of things. And he ended up becoming my mentor and propelling me into songwriting. So um, I moved to LA within a week, met Andre Merritt, he's a professional songwriter, he was my mentor, taught me everything I needed to know. Um, I ended up getting into a publishing deal and it just ended up making the most sense staying in LA. Um, I did read your credits on allmusic.com, which probably isn't a comprehensive list, you probably have a lot more going on, but um, allmusic.com credits you as a vocal producer for one of my favorite contemporary R&B artists, Keisha Cole, and then also Fifth Harmony as well, which I believe you earned a gold plaque for? Yes. Okay, congratulations on Thank that. Um, belated. <laughs> but uh, just, just for the people watching who might not be familiar with that world, what is vocal production? Vocal production is basically when an artist performs your song, you're the person who's sitting on the other side of the board making sure that they sound amazing. Um, it's a very interesting process. Some artists are easier to deal with, some artists are not so easy to deal with, but a great vocal producer will make it go off seamlessly. So. I would guess you're the top selling singer songwriter in the online beat licensing world, uh, which is which is interesting because when you think of the online beat marketplace, mm -hmm. you think producers, you don't really think singer songwriters. Um, and at, at yesterday's panel, uh, I heard you say that that when you were in LA, you were in the the mode of you know like a lot of us were, myself included, you were in the mode of chasing placements, doing label runs, doing studio runs. And that was your original goal, but it shifted. So why did you find the, the online beat marketing landscape more favorable or, or just a better fit for you? Um, I felt like I was really trying to fit in with everybody else's goals because it seemed like everybody else was like, you know, got to get the Beyonce placement, got to get, I don't know, whoever's placement. And so it seemed like it made the most sense. And plus I was seeing people like, um, I don't know, the dream, who, <laughs> yeah. you know, they're like living amazing lives from writing music, so it felt like it was attainable because I was around all of the same type of people. Um, but I also, in the same, the same breath, was listening to people like Gary Vee and um, Sean Stevenson, just a ton of like really popular entrepreneurs who built their whole entire lives around things that they're extremely passionate about, and it seemed like I should be able to do something musically um, that made me feel right, like feel like I actually belonged where I was at. Um, and then I was stuck in a publishing deal, so it was kind of feeling like it was impossible. But once I got out of my deal and all of these little entrepreneurial opportunities just kept popping up, including um, Abe from BeatStars, and it just started feeling like everything made sense because Abe was just talking all of the things that I had been wanting to do, passive income, controlling your schedule, you know, just taking all of the middlemen out of the equation. So. That definitely was when the switch went off in my head. I want to pick up on, on your introduction to Abe, but first, this is a running theme with a lot of the interviews that I do mm -hmm. with, with, with uh, people who have experience in the capital I music industry, publishing deals, mm -hmm. a lot of horror stories. Would you, without opening a can of worms, would you consider signing another publishing deal or has that just completely uh, deterred you from, from any kind of scenario involving that? 
Um, I go back and forth with it in my head. Um, some days I think it's the absolute worst idea to ever have a publishing deal for simple reasons of right now I'm working on Star and Empire and all of the money comes to me. I don't have to split it with anybody. It, the main fee comes directly to me and anybody else that has a publishing deal has to s split their little fee with everyone. So that type of stuff I feel like is amazing. Then on the other side, I have opportunities still with people in the music industry and I feel like I'm a small fish and they're sharks. <laughs> so I feel like um, labels will take advantage of you if they can and I feel like because I don't have like a muscle behind me, like, you know, trying to make sure that everybody is, or I'm taken care of, um, those are the times that I feel like a publishing deal would be ideal. But I feel like if I were to do it, I wouldn't, I would do an admin and only share like a small amount of my stuff. And um, it would have to be a weird looking deal because I wouldn't want them touching my beat stars. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I feel It'd like- It would be a modern deal. It would have to be very modern. Because publishing deals, I think the structure of a publishing deal, well, I know it, it predates what's, what's happening now, now, the technology yeah. and everything. And so there's a lot I mean, YouTube revenue, all, all, there are all these income streams, mm -hmm. licensing online, non-exclusively, that, that they don't account for. Yeah. So you think that's gonna change moving forward? I mean, it has to, right? No, because you know, I've been taking meetings, because I've been trying to be open-minded. I've been taking meetings with management, I've been like meeting at labels, I've been meeting at publishers, and sometimes when I talk to them, I feel like they're actually so many light years behind what's going on in the BeatStars community that it feels like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I feel like things would just have to change or like maybe something major like Spotify and Apple become, you know what I mean? Like a situation that you sign deals with. I'm not sure. But um, I think that's already happening to it, some degree. You know? Yeah. So I feel like I'm not sure if like classic labels are ever going to be at least fitting for somebody in the online community. I'm not sure. That's interesting because producers have that situation too. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't say his name. It's someone that we both know. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he had to kind of work around that. Being in the deal. Being in the deal, but in addition to, to controlling his, his or her, we'll say, we don't know what gender this person <laughs> is, um, to controlling their, their online sales yeah. and not having the publisher um, dip their hand into that. Yeah. But back to a back to, um, pretty interesting story. So you mentioned, you know, the influence that Abe from BeatStars had on, on your decision to start licensing music online. How did you meet Abe or how did he find you? What was that story? Um, I was actually on another platform uh, singing songs for other people. It's like a different type of platform where um, customers come to you and DJs and like other type of producers who just want vocals or just want a songwriter to do like something one off, you can choose a rate. So um, I was doing that for a while, but it's very time consuming. You have to give a lot of yourself to individual people. It's like a lot of customer service. It's a lot of, it's a lot. And so um, Abe had actually came through and hired me <laughs> on the platform and then we got to talking and he was telling me about what was going on on BeatStars and I, I literally thought he was full of shit. I thought it was gonna be like a waste of my time. I didn't, everything he was saying just, it sounded like what I wanted but it just didn't seem like an attainable thing to do. Yeah, because you learn that you don't get what you want in the music industry. Yeah, that's exactly my experience. Yeah. And so um, when Abe is like, when I've been sitting here listening to all these people talk about passive income and you know, just like controlling your own life, and then Abe comes in and is like, well, yeah, <laughs> that's what we're doing yeah. successfully. So um, I felt like I had nothing to lose. I didn't feel, I felt like it was only an opportunity. So I tried it and yeah, within like, six months, I felt like my whole my whole income and my whole outlook on what I was doing had shifted and changed. Was it kind of a vacuum effect in the sense that in that world there were so many producers but so few if any singer-songwriters that were willing to license their hooks? Mm -hmm. I mean, you were, you're kind of a, 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 a shock trooper mm -hmm. for that community. I, don't, I think a lot of singer-songwriters haven't caught on in the same uh, numbers as producers. Yeah and you put yourself out there and took a chance on that that, mm -hmm. that platform early on. And, and It definitely was different. It's definitely like um, a weird experience. And I think um, me going through that, now all my other songwriter friends who want to be involved in it, I feel like I can tell them things I would have done differently, like maybe not using my real name um, on all 500 million hooks that I've created that sure. all people release. And my name is on 500 million different songs. So, you know, there's like things I would have done differently, but um, it's definitely a weird world because I feel like there's no rules and there's no structure. So I feel like that can be confusing and complicated within itself where sometimes I feel like I'm 
on like a, I don't know, a straight path to success, and then other times I feel like I'm not making any sense because there's no rule book to what we're doing. Well, on the subject of structure, mm -hmm. how do you structure your work? You know, what's your weekly schedule like? I'm the worst scheduler okay. of all time. <laughs> That's pretty much, um, I wake up, I really try to be scheduled. I have like, I have a whiteboard on my door that is supposed to be my schedule. I typically wake up and do the absolute and opposite. Just drawings and yeah, <laughs> it's like the absolute opposite of um, what I actually end up doing. But I try to actually do blocks where one day is a hook day. One day I've also started dabbling into like producing and starting my own tracks and mm. then sending them to producers. So uh, another day might be a day where I start all my ideas, and then the next day might be a day where I do outside projects for people who are just paying me for one-offs. Um, and then sometimes it ends up just becoming a week of hooks. Sometimes it's a week of me on the couch watching movies because I feel mentally drained and I just have nothing to give. So I try to have time to um, find inspiration. But my week, my schedule, I feel like is all over the place. I'm pretty, um, I don't know. I'm the worst with schedules. <laughs> so another producer that you work pretty closely with is, is Dream Life. And I was talking to him earlier today and we were kind of musing on how to us, and maybe you know, to others, production is the same way, but to us, the songwriting process is so kind of mystic. Mm -hmm. um, what is your, uh, your songwriting process? I mean, when, when you come up with the cadences, when you come up with the melodies and the, and the lyrics to go along with them, and it's all over someone else's beat. And I know you said you're starting to produce yourself as mm -hmm. well, so, so how is, I mean, is it just all over the place, like your schedule? Or is there more of a specific process for you? Um, I have a moment in time where it's very all over the place, where I kind of just let, like childish, like I let myself kind of just be crazy. And so I found that I write better now at home than I ever did being in like a session or like at a studio somewhere else, because um, I feel it's like really vulnerable. It, I don't know, it's like making mistakes and like, I sometimes I'm like yelling on the mic, I'm like talking about stupid things or maybe I'm singing about a sandwich I'm eating but then I felt like that melody was dope, so I'm gonna keep that. But um, I feel like I have like a nice like 10 to 15 minute period of I'm just looping the track and just singing. And I feel like when you sing, if there's a melody that for me like just strikes a chord, as corny as it sounds, in my heart. Mm. If I strike a chord somewhere in my heart, then I feel like it's gonna strike a chord somewhere else in somebody else's heart or in their body. And so I try to find melodies like that, that like evoke an emotion and a feeling. And I purposely try to pick tracks that make me feel a type of way instead of just, um, cause you know, there's so many tracks on BeatStars that I could write a hook to, but um, I try to make sure that I'm intentional when I pick something. Um, and then I try to make all my lyrics extremely relatable, which is why I say sometimes I'm out of inspiration because if I'm not necessarily going through anything, then I might not have anything to say. Or if I haven't had a conversation with someone where their life story is like, dang, he cheated on you and he had kids and a wife. And I'm like, that's a good song though. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you gotta go home and take that and turn it into something. But I feel like everybody's crazy stories is always something that if you heard it in a song, there's somebody who can relate to it or mm -hmm. somebody's friend. So I feel like that's a lot of my process is um, drawing on real life inspiration and allowing myself to make mistakes and be a little childish and, and vulnerable. That's um, interesting because I noticed about your hooks that they're not they're not aspirational in the sense that they're, they're grounded in experiences that, that average people can relate to. Mm -hmm. that's, that's interesting. Uh, I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, so to pick up on your, your home studio situation, your, your vocal mixes are always great. And I think a lot of people don't realize that that's pretty much exclusively on your end, right? Mm -hmm. So on the technical side of recording, how do you, what's, what's your process for that? Um, well, I'm a bit of a vocal chain snob. So like I ha I'm like the worst person with like terrible engineers. Cause mm. if I don't have like a vibey, like I like to sound like the record is already done as I'm like recording it. And so I had the pleasure of knowing some incredible engineers who kind of set me up with the right plugins. And I manipulate the settings the way that I like the settings to be. I like my EQ to be a little more, um, I like it to sound a little more radio -y and thinner. And then I boost a lot of the air qualities in it. Um, I love a lot of reverb and delay. And I have literally, as I'm doing melodies and stuff like that, that however my finished hook sounds is how I was recording like melodies okay. and stuff like that as well. Oh, nice. So it's a, it's a very organic process for you then. 
Yes, very much so. So just to be clear, back to the back to the money and the reality of, of money. And I, I ask a lot of producers this too, but but say you never get another major placement again, no major vocal production work, nothing like that. Are you you're able to sustain yourself off of the online licensing marketplace? Um, without Beat Stars? Or with Beat with Stars, Beat yeah. Stars? Um, yes, absolutely. I feel like literally when I started doing Beat Stars, doing music industry stuff was like a du I wouldn't even show up to any sessions I was invited to. It was just a, like a no go. Mm. I've been now I've become more open to like just different opportunities because I feel like why turn away opportunities. But um, I feel like yes, with Beat Stars, it's a hundred percent sustaining my whole entire life. It's actually allowed me to get more equipment a better space, you know. And it's allowing me to do the Star Empire stuff without having to worry about where my money's coming from while I'm solely working on something else. And you have an alter ego as well? Yes, Stargazer Lily. What does that entail? That is something like later in life I want to do like an insane creative project that just kind of like how David Bowie did um, I can't remember the name of the album, but he had like an alter ego. It was like the life and death of, yeah, um, I can't remember. With the star. Yeah. Yes. And so I just kind of want to have a whole entire moment that's like outside of anything I've ever done. And might just, you know, just allow you to be weird and um, experiment with things that maybe I wouldn't experiment in my normal. Ziggy Stardust. Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I like, knew it would come to me. Yeah. Um, so I want to have an entire Ziggy Stardust moment. Um, with Stargazer Lily. I just, I feel like when that time comes, I'm gonna know, I'm gonna know what that vibe is and I'm just gonna run with it. So, what would you tell a new songwriter trying to enter the music business in 2018, 2019? Um, I feel like the advice I would give is something I feel like all of them would not wanna hear. Um, but, you know, just to remember that there's no magic recipe to get to where it is you're trying to go, I feel like the best thing we can do is be patient and keep releasing things. Because I feel like the more you release, it means the more you're working and the better you're getting. And I think as long as you're great, everything that it is you're looking for will find you. So how do people find you? Um, I feel like the easiest way is my website, BriannaMarin.com, or going on BeatStars and searching Brianna Marin. <laughs> they will get a lot of results. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Thank much continued you. success to you. Uh, hopefully this is the start of a working relationship yes, between us. Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool.